Welcome to Now Church. We are about to begin. Please take this opportunity to pull out your smartphone so you can like, share, and check in on our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please use the hashtag NowChurch. Thank you, and enjoy today's service. church you become the church but the church isn't the building the church is the vision the church is the people the church is the gathering it doesn't matter if we have stained glass or not we're not looking for religious symbolism we're looking for spiritual substance that's found only in Christ Jesus the substance is that we're giving a place for a gathering for his presence to come and connect with real people with real problems and situations on a real journey that just have a sincere heart to move along and get to know God better. That's what church life is about. We are now church, building a relevant, creative church, empowering people to reach others. Not just empowered for yourself, but empowered to go love somebody that was unlovable. It was unlovable. Thousands of people have come onto this property, into this auditorium, and have experienced a life-changing touch from God. But we believe that our best days are still ahead of us, not behind us. In order to keep doing that, you, know, you can't rest on what you've accomplished. because we're not enthralled with our past as much as we are captivated by our future. Now church has never been stronger, more focused, more united around our common mission, vision, and values. By God's grace, we are healthy and we're poised for the future.
next to you. Our God is faithful. He always has been. And he won't stop now. If you believe it, put your hands together and give him another pound of praise in the house. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We give you glory today. Faithful is our God. Faithful are you, Lord. Yeah.
Spirit. Lord, when we are intentional about encountering, having a moment with you, we thank you that you come, you show up, and we thank you that you've declared and shown us that there is no name that's higher than the name of Jesus. So Jesus, would you come? Jesus, would you fill this space today? Jesus, would you heal those who are broken? Jesus, would you come and, and work only what you can do. Jesus, would you come? You're invited here. You're welcome here. You're the guest of honor. Would you come? Because it's your presence. Come on. It's the open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. It's your presence. Open door, so come now, Lord, like never before. There is power in His name. How many of you believe that there is power in the name of Jesus? While we take a moment and make sure he knows he's welcome here. Yeah. There's a name that levels mountains, calls out highways through the sea. I've seen his power unravel battles right in front of me. Yes, I have. Yes, I have, church. Yeah. And there's a faith that stands to fight. It sends Goliath to his knees. And I've seen his praise unravel shackles. Right off my feet. Have you seen that as well, church? Let's sing about his name together. Say, because that's the power of your name. Just a mention makes a way. Giants fall and strongholds break. There is healing. That's the power that I lay. It's the same that rolled away. There's no Power like the name Jesus. Let's sing about that 
cause I curl In the furnace of afraid Yeah The kind of daring expectations That every prayer I something here. You know, faith is active. It's not just a passive thing. We're talking about that a lot this month. Would you turn to someone at your left and right and just, just give them a big smile and then just turn back and give the other person a big smile. And then look up, look over here for a second. I just am really aware by 
doing so much traveling lately and too much traveling. Just so glad to be home. Just so glad to be here. I'm, honestly, uh, uh, last week is the final Sunday of the year I'm going to miss because I want to be home. But here's what hits me coming back. I just have a different perspective. You know, you have no idea what that person that just smiled at you has been trusting God for this week. You have no idea what hell somebody went through last night or what challenges someone has faced or what happened at work this week. But God knows all that. And I just felt like here we are declaring the promises of God and speaking the word. Would you take a moment right where you are? And you know, we haven't really done a lot of body life ministry. Body life ministry is when I have you minister to each other. Since COVID, that's been kind of a freaky kind of a thing. And I don't want you to get in somebody's face. But would you put your hand on somebody's shoulder right now? Some of you didn't come to church with, preferably. Just put on their shoulder. Don't, don't join hands with you. don't want to spread germs. But just put your hand on their shoulder. Thank you, team, for doing that. Would you just take the next 30 seconds and close your eyes and just pray for them right now? Just pray for that person. Open your mouth loud enough for your own ears to hear your own voice. You don't have to scream. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for every person around us today. Lord, you know what they went to bed with last night, what they were thinking, what their mind has been through, what their finances have been going through, what their job has been going through. You know the challenges that they face. You know all the heaviness of their hearts. And Lord, for those even at home watching right now, connecting on our stream, Lord, we just release the blessing of God, the clarity of God, the wisdom of God, that breakthrough power we sing about in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you care for this person. You care for them and you care for us. You care for me. And Lord, we just release your best and your blessing and your goodness and your favor. Lord, heal the areas of brokenness today. Heal the areas of struggle. Make every crooked place straight and bring every blessing and good thing to life in them and through them and for them this week, even today. Heal every hurting heart and bring forth your purpose in your timing. Let your kingdom come and your will be done in this life as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Now praise him like you got the answer. Come on. Praise him like you got the answer. Come on. Lord, we thank you. You're a God who answers prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever you want to do, PL. I don't know if you want to go back in. Are we done? Good. All right. Well, take your seats. Okay, God's going to keep moving here. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think we're good. Everybody's like, are we good? We're good? I think we're good. We're good? All right. Listen, uh, we've got a lot of stuff happening this week, and I just wanted to share with you. And, uh, you know, I want to do something for you. I'm going to give you a prayer assignment. How about that? We're not going to pray right now. We just we had some great time right there. But I want to give you a prayer assignment. I'm going to give you some homework. Are you ready? I want you to, to remember this verse. This is in Proverbs 29.2. And, and be prayerful about this week, because this week something big is happening on election day. And if you've been here at this church, you realize we do not label ourselves with some earthly label. We're from the, we're, we're of the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen, people, we're from the kingdom of God. That's who we, that's who we represent. And I just want to share with you this verse. It says, everyone rejoices when lovers of God flourish. But the people groan when wicked rise to power. And here this week we have choices to make. And I'm asking you, listen, don't, don't be thinking in terms of the, these labels. Let me go a little bit further. It's not, God didn't say in this verse, Republican, Democrat, or Independent. He said God lovers. That's what God considers as important, God lovers. Let's be prayerful this week. That's your assignment. Pray the word. 
and be prayerful and let's pray for our nation because our nation needs healing. Amen. It's way too much division. Division is not of God. Division is from hell. And the enemy's taking too much ground. So let's believe God for healing in Jesus' name. Amen? Will you do this? You going to do your homework? Okay, now we'll move on. That's good. Thank you very much. Okay, the next one is we have a lot of stuff to share with you about in the know and some things that are happening here at Now Church, some things that have happened. It's exciting. So first one, we wanted to share with you the ladies' Bible study gathered together, and it was a great time, everyone gathering together, and it was awesome. They absolutely loved this time and had some great pictures there. And so ladies, listen, if you are able to connect, this is an amazing time, ladies, amazing time. And so this is one of three times that you're gathering together together. So this is the second one, correct? So we have another one coming up. And let me see, what is the, what is the date of the next one? The ladies Bible study. 17th. There you go. So it's 17th. So listen, it is incredible. These ladies getting together and it's worth the time to be able to just share and, and really study and dig in. And so another announcement's coming up in a little bit as well too at the end of service about ladies gathering together for a lunch and I'll tell you more about that. Also, we talked to you about the playground, new playground that we needed. We took down the old one and put up a new one. So it shows you some of those guys out there working, building it. If you've ever built an Ikea furniture, this was like times 100, those guys were saying. So many things, but go ahead and show them. There's some other pictures there, just some work as they're, as they're taking place, and, uh, and finally they finish this week, and the kids are absolutely gonna, absolutely gonna love it. I'm like, I'm looking at it, I'm like, that looks fun. But I would probably get stuck in that tunnel up there, so I'm not gonna do it. But anyway, but so it's just so good that we were able to just bless and share and love our kids now, now church kids, awesome, all right? That they can have a fun time out there. Also, we have another announcement for you, but it's a video announcement by our own Pastor Lindsay. So if you guys can go ahead and play that. Hey church, I wanted to hop on here and give you a personal invite. Let me explain kind of what happened and is happening very recently in one of our services. Uh, we were teaching a new song, and I said, kind of in a prompt too in the moment, I said, hey, let me hear all the ladies sing, miracles, signs, and wonders, right? Then I had the men sing, miracles, signs, and wonders. And I thought, oh my God, we got a bunch of people in the church who can sing. How cool would it be for us to have a choir? And it is the perfect time, December the 18th, we're gonna do our, you know, our normal Christmas celebration. And I would love nothing more than to have a bunch of men, let me say that, men and women be a part of a now church Christmas choir. Um, the details are gonna be somewhere on this screen. Um, I know that you can use the QR code, but also I've got my team of admin uh, out front ready to take your information, get you signed up. But boy, I hope we have a great participation because I think it's a really cool way to celebrate Jesus and how awesome would it be to have a now church Christmas choir. Thank you guys for participating. Love you. God bless you. It's going to be fun. All right. That's good. <laughs> Miracle signs and wonders. How'd you do that? I was like way high and way low. That was amazing. All right. So we have uh, just wanted to let you know if you were newer to Now Church, listen, there is a place for you and we're glad that you're here, but also we want to make sure that you feel welcome even for your first day. Make sure you go by our welcome center out front on your way out. You have some people out there ready to give you some gifts of appreciation for coming and really make sure that you're connecting and that you're welcoming here. You're being welcomed at Now Church. Also, we challenge you from the very first experience you have with Now Church. It's called a three-week challenge. Check out Now Church three weeks in a row and see what God does. We put it out there because we believe that you're here on purpose. Maybe you thought, I'll just check it out. But God was like, no, I'm sending you, right? Because there's some things you need to hear, things you need to receive, and some people you need to meet right here that can change your life. So we're glad that you are here at Now Church, all right? Awesome. I want you to welcome our guest who is not a guest. It's awesome. It's been a while since Pastor Richard has been preaching here. So come on, let's give it up for our pastor. We're so proud of him. Thank you, everybody. It's good to be home, as I said. It's exciting to be around, see what God is doing. I do have a few pictures to show you of Lincoln, Nebraska. If you've never been to Lincoln, Nebraska, it's a great place and a great church there called Mercy City. And so Pastor Gail and I flowed together. We did a huge leadership meeting last Friday night there. And they're uh, kind of their 
uh, now crew rally kind of thing like we do here. And uh, do we have those going up? There we go. So Pastor Gail and I, we, we tag teamed the whole weekend. We preached last Sunday. She uh, opened up for me a little bit and, and we're flowing together. It was so exciting. We had a lot of um, things take place. We did, did the book signing and uh, listen to this. So for Boston, because we sold out so fast, we only took 50 bu- books to Boston. So we said, oh, we'll take 100 books to Lincoln. So we're signing the books and somebody comes and says, I'm so sorry, we're out of books. I said, what do you mean we're out of books? My, and, and they told my wife, we sold out in 10 minutes, the 100. So then they pre-ordered. Anyway, I ended up 216 books are in, are in Lincoln, Nebraska, du- more than double what I was believing for and just tremendous, so great blessing and uh, good things happening with the book. Uh, I wanna tell you real quickly as they keep flashing through some of those, uh, they can keep going through those pictures as they want to, but it's very exciting. Um, the book is getting into places that, uh, that I could never go. Two state senators, one was there last week, our picture, we're pictured with her. This is state senator Suzanne Geist. She is the, um, the mother of the youth pastor there in Lincoln at Mercy City and a great friend over these last few years. And she is a strong leader. In fact, she is running uh, in April for the, uh, to become the mayor of Lincoln, which is the third highest political office in the state of Nebraska. Very influential office. So please pray for Suzanne Geist. Anyway, so she was there and was able to uh, get her a book. Anyway, one of the ladies was a secretary to another state senator who's a Catholic lady And she said, would you please sign this for my boss? This is going into the senator's office. She's going through some things and she needs prayer. And I'm gonna get her to read this book. So that was huge. And then another guy stood in line. He said, I want you to know. He said, I bought three books. He said, the first one's for me. He said, the second one and third one, you don't have to sign for anybody specific. He said, I got special permission to take these into two prisons. And he said, so they're gonna be in the prisons this next week. So here we are in Senate's office, two Senate offices and two prisons. And the heights and the depths and the ways that God wants to rescue people from being stuck just amazes me. So would you give it up for God? Um, this is their praise and worship. Uh, let's see, this is, this is, that's just preaching there. And uh, anyway, I had to show you this. This is breakfast pizza. I, I, I got to always show you food. I can't be taught by Pastor Chris showing barbecue all week last week. I think he did seven minutes on ribs and, 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 and 18 minutes on Jesus. But anyway, it was, like, it was like, wow, it was a secret sauce for real. Made me hungry watching Pastor Chris. But anyway, this is Casey's breakfast pizza. If you're anybody from the Midwest, you would know it. This is from a gas station, kind of like Wawa. Uh, but they make the best, they kind of invented breakfast pizza we celebrate it. Listen, we, 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 we celebrate anybody that loves Jesus. Anyway, never mind. I won't give you that one anyway. Anyway, also real quick before we get into the word, um, this week, Wednesday, is a big, big day. Anybody gets the version app, Unstuck Devotional hits this Wednesday or maybe Tuesday night at midnight. I'm not sure. But if you please this week, download uh, unstuck devotional on the YouVersion app, and uh, you, can, you can be right along there with us. Even if you read the book, it'll be a blessing to you. So please be a part of that for this Wednesday, okay? We begin a new, a new theme, a new series, a new month this week called Faith That Moves Mountains. As I've been really seeking God, I've, I, the great thing about not preaching as much on Sundays, I've had real time just to get with God and seek the Lord for fresh just, just me and him, you know, not just pulling for a message. And sometimes those things that drop in, things that the Lord speaks to my heart, um, just, I, I just really felt some things very strong. So I'm gonna give them to you. We'll start this week and see where we go, okay? Hebrews 11, one is where we're gonna begin from the message. It says in verse one, the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. I love this. It is our handle on what we can't see. It's something you can hang on to that you can't see the other side of it. You just get the handle on it by faith. By faith, verse three says, we see the world 
called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we don't see. I also want to weave in there Proverbs 24 from the message, verse 30. Solomon writes, One day I walked by the field of an old lazy bones and then passed the vineyard of a lout. They were overgrown with weeds, thick with thistles, all the fences broken down. I took a long look and I pondered what I saw. The fields preached me a sermon and I listened. A nap here, a nap there. A day off here, a day off there. Sit back, take it easy. Do you know what comes next? Just this. You can look forward to a dirt poor life with poverty as your permanent house guest. Let's pray one more time. Father God, would you open the eyes of our hearts today that we can see, take hold, and apply your word Lord, we believe that your word is inerrant, it is inspired, it is infallible, it is without mistake. And everything that you've written is for us to know you better and to experience the life you've intended for us. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, much of the world has become so lazy the last few years between the fear of so many out of control situations, crime, political unrest, inflation, COVID, other diseases. It shouldn't be surprising that some folks just want to curl up and go to sleep. Just la, 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 just pretend it doesn't exist. And unfortunately, the church of Jesus seems to have picked up the same contagion, spiritual laziness. You know, there are no shortcuts to strong faith. And sometimes if we follow fads or trendy sloppiness, we forget that the Bible says the just, the people of God, shall live by faith. And I want to ask you this week, are you coasting in your faith or pushing in your faith? Because if you're coasting right now, you miss the moment because coasters are in trouble. I don't mean the things you place under a glass on a table. People that are just kind of set to status quo, Okay, let's just do it. Oh, it's Sunday, let's go to church. We're glad you're at church. We're glad you're watching. You know, <clears throat> I found two or three of my friends recently, including our friends in Lincoln, that said, um, yeah, we've gone off our, our streaming. We've, we've taken it right off. So why? Because we found that a lot of people are using it as an excuse to stay home and really not even leaning into God. They're kind of watching us in the background and they're not really paying attention. Hint, hint. My friend Julian Melfi in London has done the same thing. He said, you know what? If you, if you think that we're here to entertain you and just, to, yeah, let's, let's, let's give you a little song and dance every Sunday and we're gonna do a show. Let's do a show, everybody. Then we're not really living by faith, are we? We're kind of living by little religious snippets, little religious nuggets, feeling better about ourselves because we did so. Well, I, I watched last week. Well, that's great. We're glad you're watching. And listen, for those of you that can't, you literally can't get here because you're sick or because you've been, you're out of town, that's the only reason we're staying on right now because it, is, it, it really is one of those things where people have a tendency to follow the path of least resistance and they get spiritually lazy. And we kind of check out, oh, the building's going up. That's great. Oh, Pastor Richard's got a book out. That's great. Oh, this, oh, this is all good. No, 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 no. You're missing the boat. You're missing the point of all this. It's about others. It's about other people. It's about you getting so connected with the Lord that you fall in love with him afresh. It's not about that you got saved three weeks ago or a year ago or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. It's how do you keep moving in that first love? How do you keep moving in that relationship where it keeps growing? Listen, it's great to be casual in appearance. I, I'm, I'm so glad that I'm not like I was a few weeks ago in Ghana, wearing a suit and tie this Sunday or a big heavy robe, I ended up doing all of it. 
I'm so thankful I could come like I wanted to come dressed today. I'm glad you can too. But there's something, are you getting casual in your faith? Are you getting casual in your faith where you, where you lost respect for God's house, lost respect for his presence, and even lost respect for his word? That's a challenge. That's a challenge. And so the Lord began to deal with my heart and said, look, my people, my people need to be challenged to get back to growth again internally, personal development and growth in their faith. And I was like, well, God, I've preached on faith for 32 years. By the way, while I was gone, we had our 35th anniversary of leaving the insurance business and starting in full-time ministry it was October 28th, 1987. And so that's 35 years ago, last Friday. And I figured out that day we were about to go speak to the leaders. I thought, oh my gosh, this is a big day. This is 35 years. For all these years, I've been, I, I've been learning faith. And therefore, I've been teaching faith. The problem is, a lot of people forget what they have heard. Or some newer people come in, and they don't know what faith really is. And so we need to look at it this month from different angles as we prepare for these tremendous moments together that we're gonna have um, with Thanksgiving coming up and all kinds of great things that are happening and we're preparing. I mean, the building is moving forward. I'm so thankful for that. We're hoping the doors and windows go on this week. We're hoping to pass an electrical inspection uh, this week. We're hoping to start the drywall going in more this week. I mean, all kinds of stuff happening right now, but it's so, it's so intricate, you can't all see it because we, we've, we've been looking at the same outside of the building for all this time. What's going on? There's a lot going on. You just can't see it. That's the same with faith. One of the key things you need to know this is this. Faith is dynamic, never static. Now, I know that sounds like scientific terms, but all I'm telling you is this. Faith is either growing or it's shrinking. It's never sitting still. The enemy wants you to believe that you should just take a break sometimes in your faith and go, well, you know, I'll just take a break from church. I'll just take a break from God. You're going backwards. Listen, very few people, when they backslide, they, do they just suddenly have a, wake up one day and go, you know, I don't need God. I'm not gonna serve God. No, it happens subtly and slowly in those little moments where you think you're good, where you think you're doing well, where you, this is, and, and you go, well, I'm, I've been, you know, I've been, you know, uh, we've had people that were very involved for a season and then they suddenly weren't involved and they just felt like taking a break. The problem is, if you take a break from serving, I understand that. But if you take a break from, from Christian community life and interacting with the body, that's a problem. You wanna, if, you wanna, if you need a few weeks to, to sit and, and, and rest, we get that. But the problem is people are looking right now. That's why we're having this collapse of our work ethic in the, in the, in the country right now, in the world right now. People, people, unless they actually have to get a paycheck, some of them just don't even wanna work. It's going, but it's seeping into our culture in the church. It's seeping into us. And it's dangerous, my friend, because you can fool yourself into believing that, well, I'm good, you know, I, I, I look at what God's been doing in my life. That's great, but that's not an indicator of what's gonna happen in the next few weeks or months because faith is dynamic. It's not static. It doesn't sit still. If you're not moving forward in your relationship with the Lord and in the knowledge of the word, then you're going backward and you don't know it. Hello? Is anybody awake today? Are you hearing me? If you're, if you're not going forward, you're automatically going backward. And a lot of people, see, this is why we get in trouble with the whole once saved, always saved doctrine of many of the churches today. And listen, I believe when, when you're born again and you have a real relationship with the Lord and only God knows that, okay? But if you have that, no one can snatch you from the Father's hand. You are eternally secure in relationship. You, you will go to heaven when you die, but it doesn't mean you're gonna experience heaven on earth. 
It doesn't mean that, see, the relationship is dynamic. It has to be, there are, there's movement to it. There's forward progress. And this is the danger of somebody that, that went to a church maybe and got saved every Sunday. And then, uh, then once in a while, they just kind of, you know, they, they never feel like they ever measure up, but it's always about, most of the time, about heaven. It's about the afterlife. And I believe in heaven and I believe in the afterlife and we need to have our eyes on eternal things. We do, but everlasting life is from now on. Everlasting doesn't mean that, you, that the timeline starts when you croak. Sorry to be insensitive there. Kick the bucket. Push up daisies. Whatever you want to say. If you've lost a loved one recently, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be crass here, but I'm trying to see. Listen, Hebrews 6 says this way. Verse 12. See that you don't become sluggish. Now that's an important word. But imitate those who through faith and patience, and here are the promises. If I have time this month, I'm gonna tell you all of faith has, faith has a lot of partners. Faith and patience, you inherit the promises. Faith, hope, and, faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these things is love. Faith, hope, works with hope and love. Faith and love together. Faith and patience work together. There are partners of faith. I guess I just preached it. You got the bonus. But the word there, see, you don't become sluggish. You know, anybody like boxing? Any of the guys like boxing? It used to be a great sport. I mean, today's, there's not the great heavyweights that there were growing up when I was a kid. I mean, I loved watching some of those fights. We'd get together with friends and watch boxing. Muhammad Ali, Joe Frazier. Those are, those are men. Those are boxers. But sluggish means you've taken too many hits to the head to be sluggish. You know, I, <clears throat> as much as I respected Muhammad Ali as a boxer, his whole rope-a-dope thing worked great short-term, but long-term, it destroyed his brain to where he couldn't hardly talk, couldn't hardly move without shaking, Many of God's people are starting to look sluggish in faith. Like you've taken a few too many punches and hits. And it's time to get back to stepping forward and going forward. Listen, God has given each a measure of faith. That's what the Bible says. He gave every person a measure. Was it all the same measure? No. Everybody has a different measure of faith. But you can't use your measure and say, well, that guy had more faith. That's not fair, God. You gave them more faith than you did me. No, 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 it's not about that. There are a whole lot of people that have surpassed you or me to start out with less than we had because it's about what you do with your faith. It's about what you do with your faith. You, it, it's, it's, it's either growing or it's shrinking. It doesn't matter how much you have or how little you have to start with. You're only responsible to grow what you have. And you are responsible to grow. Like the parable of the talents, you either use your faith and grow it or you lose your faith and it's gone. The wicked lazy servant in the parable of talents played it safe and took the talent that he had, the ability he had, the gifting that he had, and he buried it in the ground because he was afraid he was gonna lose it, ended up losing it and losing everything. Where we, you're responsible for your measure. You have a measure of faith. You've been given that measure. Now what you do with that measure it's up to you. Now, I always say this, and pardon me if this is a big review for you, but this is, I felt like God said, it's time to get back to the ABCs of faith for this month. So if you've heard it, hear it again. Amen. Hear it, hear it with a fresh, oh, I need to do something with this, okay? Hear it with the love with which it's intended. Faith is like a muscle. Everybody born is born with muscles in their body. Not everybody looks like a bodybuilder, thank God. Not everybody, not everybody builds them up, builds up their muscles to look big or cut 
or whatever all the terminology is. God has given everybody a measure of faith, but this is the reality. You build up muscle through resistance. When I'm traveling quite a bit, I take these resistance bands with me so I can still work out of the hotel. They're these bands that are, you know, equal to 50 pound weights, 40, 30, and so on. And, you know, when you, when you do them a little bit and you do them right, you do them slow and steady, you kind of hurt a couple days later. You, you know, and that's the way, your faith is supposed to be growing like that, but in order to grow faith, it has to be broken down with resistance. And you say, I don't understand the purpose of why I'm going through this challenge right now. I don't, I'm not telling you God's just trying to teach you something. I'm not, but I am telling you that God wants you to grow in faith and trusting him so that where, what, where, what you're believing for now is nothing compared to what you're gonna believe in for in five years. And I'm not talking about material things. I'm talking about eternal things. I'm talking about everything works th for, the, for the believer. Everything works by faith. That's why we're called believers, not be sitters. Believers, are you awake, are you happy? Can you please tell your face that it's okay to smile at church today? I'm not here, uh, you know, I know dad's home, but it's, uh, you know, you guys, are, listen, Pastor Chris did a great job, Pastor Tristan did a great job, Pastor Gail did a great job, Pastor Lindsay did a great job. Give it up for our pastors, they did, you had the word. This wasn't nursery time where they were babysitting you. You got dynamic word without having to have a guest speaker, that's tremendous. What a blessing to have these people in our world, in our lives. Are you experiencing resistance in some area of your life to what you're trusting God for? I'm not asking you for a show of hands, but I want you to think about this. If you're experiencing resistance to a promise from God or something you're pursuing in God, Welcome to good things. Because if there's no opposition, I question whether what you're doing is actually trusting God for anything. Remember, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Please means to put a smile on his face. Without faith, Hebrews eleven six, 6, it's impossible to please God. For, for he that comes to God must believe two things. Number one, that he is God. But here's the thing. I believed that God was God before I was saved. But I didn't have a relationship with him where I believed, number two, that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. That's not just seeking him. That's diligence implies effort, energy, passion, Work, doing something. Now listen, we don't work to get him to love us. He already loves us. But listen, just like your kids, your children can, you know, you love them all the time, right? Even when you don't like them, right? But you love your children. But that doesn't mean everything they do puts a smile on your face. I mean, you sit there and you think, oh man, I wish, I wish they wouldn't do that. I wish they wouldn't do that. Doesn't put a smile on your face, but you still love them. But what's a, what the Bible says pleases your father, your heavenly father, is when you're trusting him for the next promise, the next purpose, the next season, the next the next part of your life, the next part of your purpose coming alive. That's what it is. You've got to trust him. Now, I will say this, that there were times in our walk when we, went, when we were preparing for ministry back in the mid to late 80s where something that, that, that really today would seem easy was, was a, gave me a faith cramp. Something that, you know, back then we're trusting for you know, five bucks. Just a provision to get through another day or, you know, gas for the car. I mean, how much gas can you get in your car now for five bucks? I mean, it's crazy. 
Yeah, a gallon. If, if you don't, if you're not, if you don't have diesel. I mean, it's crazy. But the reality is, I remember there were times when we were just God. We're going to go to church in Orlando. We're living in Bellevue. You know we need this week, and we're running short on this. So we're trusting you for gas money. Well, today we're trusting him for a $1.5 million building to get completed. But that didn't happen overnight. That took years, that took years for, for our faith to even get there. When we bought this land, I talked about it too much, and you probably get tired of it, but this land was a huge thing to believe for when we were four years old as a church and new in ministry. And we looked, we were trying to buy other things. That's where God taught me the, you know, that or better principle, which means God gives you something to look at but it's not necessarily that exact thing. He just gives you an object to set your faith on so you can trust him, but really he's working here. So understand that there are things going on with your faith. Don't, you can't get your faith in the exact thing because God doesn't serve you. You serve God. Every time you have to overcome a challenge, the resistance of darkness, you grow in faith. I love this promise. Jude says, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Did you know prayer and, and, and praying in the Holy Ghost, praying, praying in, in, in that supernatural language, that if you would just stop thinking about stuff and just spend time praying in, in the Spirit, the Bible says you're gonna grow in faith. It's gonna build up that faith muscle in you. But it takes faith to do that because your mind will fight you and say, no, no, I want to understand. What are you doing? What are you doing? No, you got to let your spirit. Uh, this is one of the greatest things that helped me in the early days when we received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Bob Mumford, one of the fathers of the charismatic move, said one time, and I, I, I never forgot it. He said, you know how when, uh, if you go outside the first time to mow your lawn after a long winter and you left the hose out all winter, he said, you take that hose. He said, you mow the lawn, but you get all hot. So he said, if you take that, turn that hose on and you put it up to your mouth, he said, you're gonna get spiders. You're gonna get dust. You're gonna get dirt. You're gonna get, it's gonna be awful. But he said, if you take that thing and you let that hose run for a while full blast, you're gonna get some clean, pure water eventually, cold enough to put it up to your mouth and refresh yourself. Sometimes you've got to let your hose run by praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Spirit, and with understanding. You've got to trust Him enough to pray in the Spirit. If you don't know what that is, you can talk to Pastor Chris right after church today, and we'll help you get filled with the Holy Spirit and release that ability to pray in heavenly languages. The ABCs of faith are this. Faith isn't in your own ability to believe. Faith is based 100% on what God has said through his word, the Bible. God cannot and will not contradict his own word. Faith is not wishful thinking. And the holy creator of the universe is not your personal genie. Okay, so this, that's not how faith works. And that's, I've seen a lot of people use faith like that. Like to get stuff from God. Now, it is an access to receive from God and bring things from the spirit realm into the natural realm. But those things have to be based on God's vision for your life, not just your vision for your life. Otherwise, we just sit around and pray for stuff. And I understand when you first get saved that you're, you, you start praying and stuff and you get surprised because God answers and he takes care of the $5 for gasoline or you know, whatever it takes now, $50 for gasoline. $50 bill for a few gallons of gas. I understand that, but let's not forget it's not just about selfishness. Faith is not about selfishness. It's a, eventually, it's supposed to, what you're believing for has, if you can see kingdom purpose in benefiting others, that's faith. If you see, it's not just gonna make you look good. It's not gonna just make you more comfortable. It's gonna benefit others even when they see what God is doing in your life. That's a benefit. You then you can genuinely reach out, but it's gotta be based on the unction of the Holy Spirit. God has to speak from his word. God, when, when God gives you a word from his word, so look, there's two, two words in the, in the Greek for uh, word. 
the word logos or logos or lo, where we get the word logo from, a logo. The logos, the Bible is God's logos. The written word is God's logo. That's how God is known. The Holy Bible is his word. You can't add to it or take away from it, even if an angel comes and gives you another interpretation. You gotta trust the original thoughts of what God's trying to say. But there's another word called rhema, R-H-E-M-A. And the word rhema is a spoken word from God. A spoken word from God. I talked to you about launching out to the deep a few weeks ago. And Jesus, when Jesus said, launch out in the deep, and, and Peter said, um, Master, we've taught all night, but nevertheless, at your word, the word there is rhema. Because you spoke it, and it's in coordination with your written word, because you've spoken, it's coordinated with your written word, I will let down the net. Okay, so that's, that's a difference. So, it's, so logos is the written word, rhema is the, is the spoken word, it's the release of God. Listen, God is your heavenly father, his word is his bond. It's when he gives you, when, when something is unctioned to your heart from the Bible, it's more than you just doing, you know, looking up a scripture and pointing your finger at something random. What, what are you saying, God? You know, we used to tease back when I was younger about uh, Bible roulette. Bible roulette is people that just kind of open the, Lord, give me a word. And they open the Bible and they, you know, the, the story was a young man opened it once and it said, uh, Judas went and hung himself. Found that scripture. He goes, well, speak to me, Lord. He turned and said, go and do likewise. God's never gonna tell you to go hang yourself, right? He's never gonna speak that. So a rhema word has to be consistent with the thought of God, the heart of God, and you have to go into the, you have to go after God in that. He gives you his word. So we don't conjure up what we want from God. We discover his promises by faith. Now we know faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans chapter 10, but listen to what that is. The word hearing there, faith comes by hearing means faith comes by understanding. The literal text is faith comes by understanding the word of God or understanding what God is saying to you. It's not just, it's not listening. It's not just your hearing of your ears. Faith comes by understanding and understanding by the word of God. And that's the, the word there, the word of God is logos. It's the written word of God. That I, get, that I hide this word in my heart and it starts getting inside of me. We faith people often say when you have a problem, you look through the Bible and find scriptures to pray and confess. You're the logos over your life and claim those promises. And I believe that to a point, but there's truth there. But Rhema is about the Holy Spirit speaking those scriptures directly to your spirit about your unique situation. It's not just you going, oh, I found a scripture. It's about that scripture lifted off the page and becomes what we call the aha word. Like, oh, oh my gosh, that's, I've never seen it like that before. That's a revelation word. That's, a, that's God speaking to you. Is everybody following me today? Can you lean in a little bit and say a little bit better amen in my next three minutes? The Bible is certainly for all, but it's not one size fits all. Hear me? The Bible is certainly for everybody, but it's not one size fits all. It is personally tailored. When you have relationship with Jesus, the Holy Spirit will speak and release God's will into your life and to where you are now through his word. God's promises are indeed crucial to faith, not just as a self-help book. This is not about earthly endeavors of your own. When God's desire plus yours align, you're believing in faith. You're, you're, you're trusting God in faith. You're not believing in your faith. You're believing God and you're trusting him in faith. It's not just about earthly endeavors. It's not just about going through your own thing. Second Peter 1, 3 says this, as his divine power has, past tense, given to us, all of us, all things that pertain to life and godliness. Say this with me out loud. Say, I have been given everything I need to live a life that pleases God. That's what the word says. 
that everything you need through, to live a life of godliness, to live a life of purpose, to live a life of fulfillment in relationship with God has been given, look at this, through the knowledge of him or knowing him who called us by glory and virtue by which have been, there it is, past tense again, have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these promises, you may be partakers of the divine nature. The, the Passion Translation says that you may become partners with God. Partners with God in every part of life. I, man, I, I just, I wish you'd get this. I wish you'd hear what I'm saying and the heart with which I'm saying it. The promise we get, we get spiritually lazy because we go through these things and these seasons where we've been, we go, 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 go. And then we're like, oh, I need to rest. But rest doesn't come away from God. Even your peace, that internal rest, doesn't come when you're checked out from God. And I understand we need soul rest. I, I love watching a, a comedy or you know watching a TV show or whatever. But that's not my life. And that's not where I, that's, that may be where I can recharge my soul a little bit. There's very few things that, can, that are very redemptive today that you can watch. So you have to guard your heart from that stuff. Don't misunderstand me. But what refreshes me spiritually and helps me to grow, keep growing in my faith, is leaning into God and finding those aha words from a devotional, from, a, from reading the Bible, from being at church, Hopefully today, as I'm preaching to you, a few little thoughts are getting implanted inside of you to wake up certain areas of your life where you've been asleep. That's part of the purpose. So we understand that God's given you everything. Everything you'll ever need to live a good and godly life has already been deposited within you at your point of salvation through the word of God. But when you get and read the word or hear it preached or declared, <clears throat> it, it begins to work that in you and comes up in you and through you and be begins to build up your faith muscles. Are you awake? Okay, I'm almost done. I'll just finish with this. The word works for those who work the word. Now understand that the word will work you sometimes. That God's promise over your life <clears throat> is gonna work you at times. But understand me, if we've been given all the power tools we need, all the equipment, every bit of equipment we need to build a great life, to, to build a life pleasing to God, to live for him, to find divine purpose, to accomplish things. <clears throat> um, I used to use a power drill in the, in, right here to drive the point home. You just have to imagine the power drill like you imagine the resistance bands, okay? Use your imagination for a second. A power drill, if God's given it to me, if I set it right there and show it to you, it doesn't mean anything. I gotta plug it in and then I gotta turn it on and then I gotta use it to drill something, open something, close something, you know, fix something, whatever. So you've been given the power drill, you've been given the power tool, but you have to use your faith to release God's will into action. If you believe what you're speaking in your heart and confessing with your mouth. Everything God does is through his word. We're gonna quit there. Everything begins with the word. God's words carry power. And just meditate on this thought this week. Your words carry power. A couple of years ago under COVID, everybody's masked up all the stuff going on, all the things happening. And we were so aware of what we were putting in the atmosphere, breathing in the atmosphere, or receiving in the atmosphere. But your words carry either poison or fruit. That's what the Bible says. Either delicious fruit or poison, it's in your words. And those words come out of your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I want you to listen to yourself this week. 
at what comes up out of you when you get under pressure. Because these are the moments that faith can shine. These are the moments where you realize you're different than you were before. That God has changed you because instead of the venom, the anger, the offense, the vitriol, coming out and pouring, spewing, you suddenly now have power over your words to say, you know what, I'm not gonna release that. It could make somebody else sick. It could make me sick. By your words you'll be justified, Jesus said. By your words you'll be condemned. It's not what goes into the mouth that corrupts, Jesus said. It's what comes out of the mouth that corrupts. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your holy word today. Thank you for this reminder of the power of your holy word. It is without error. It's not just an ancient history book. It's a life-giving love letter. A life-giving love letter that connects us with your heart where we can see and understand your desire to heal us, to set us free, to unite us and help us to live for you. Right now in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every situation or circumstance that's tried to bind up your people. And Father, you said in your word that that faith That measure of faith is a gift placed inside of us, but there is a supernatural gift of faith, a gift of the Holy Spirit called faith. I ask you to stir up the spirit of faith in this house, that we would know this month what faith is and what it isn't, what it does, what it doesn't do, and what you will become to us even stronger as we stop resting on our laurels and thinking that our faith is just in what we've already experienced, that we would grow in our faith. In Jesus' name. Just keep your head bowed, your eyes closed for a moment. Maybe those of you at home, I'm not mad at you for staying home, understand, but it is frustrating to hear pastors around the world talking about their folks using their stream as an excuse for spiritual lazy living. No, no, no. That's not what it's about. It's to help people, but not to give you something false to lean on. We're all part of the body of Christ and we need each other. And the word church has the word gathering right in it. It's the first part of it is gathering, gathering gathering. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, or maybe you're watching, if you don't know him, that's the getting on place, but that's not the end. That's the beginning. To say, Jesus, come into my heart is the first step of faith. When you hear that word and you understand, aha, that's for me. I need to do something with that. The Bible says you'll be saved. You'll be saved. If you believe in your heart, and confess with your mouth. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God and tell somebody you've received him. You will be saved. Faith has those elements, believing and speaking. I wanna challenge you right now. If you've been born again, or right now, you're asking Jesus into your life, I want you to do something. I want you to tell three people before this day is out that I have been saved. God has done something in my life. I don't understand it all, but I am changed. God is working in me. Tell them, because that's part of your faith experience and expression to let somebody know that you've been born again. God is moving. Lord, I pray right now for every person in the sound of my voice that we would move forward in you 
I come against spiritual laziness and slumber and, and that lie that faith can sit still. We know that your word says that faith is always about growing and moving forward. Let our faith grow. Grow us in faith to love you and trust you more. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Give him praise right now. Come on, if you receive that word today. <laughs> Ushers, we're going to have you come up real quick. We're going to receive today's tithes and offerings. I just want to teach you a little bit for a little, just a brief second. Um, have you ever felt like you've been through so much in a row, you, like, you, you feel like you're cursed? Like, what is going on? I go through this, I go through that. And, it's, and, and you know, the enemy tries to hit you in patterns to try to wear you down, wear you out. And I'm very mindful that, you know, a lot of people, they get to a place where they feel like they can never catch a break. That's exactly the condition of the Jewish people in the time of the book of Malachi. Malachi is a really important book. It was the last book of the Old Testament for a reason because God, that was the last revelation he gave a prophet named Malachi for the children of Israel. For 400 years, he was silent. 400 years, he didn't say anything to the people of Israel. <clears throat> so it's really crucial. In Malachi, the people had gotten so far from God in their hearts, but still did religious ceremonies to pretend that they were okay with God. They just went through the motions, but they didn't have faith. And God came to purify them. Malachi chapter three is all about, and, and, and the purifier will come. He will come and purify his people. And it says, because he loves them so much, he will purify them and call them to return to him. But then it says the end of Malachi three, verse seven, that the people said back to God, return to me. He said, return to me and I'll return to you, says the Lord. But you said, in what way shall we return? And that's when God says, will a man rob God? Verse eight, will a man become so lazy that he won't even give to God a sacrifice of his best and his first? Yet you've robbed me, God says. But you say, well, we, we robbed you. They were still paying their tithes, by the way. If you look in Malachi chapter one and two, they were paying their tithes, but here's what they were doing. They were going and buying defective sheep and defective cows, and, and they're, they could get a cut rate, discount sacrifice. And then they go to the temple and give it, say, here we go, here's our sacrifice. And it clearly says under the law, you bring the, blem the, the unblemished lamb. You bring the best of your flock. You bring the first of your flock. And they were cheating the system, but still thinking, okay, but I'm, still, I'm doing it. I'm doing what you said, wink, wink. Nudge, nudge, say no more. Nope. God calls him on it. And he says, and what we've robbed you? In tithes and offerings, tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse. God didn't say, I've cursed you. He said, he said you cursed yourself. You are cursed with a curse. He just identifies it. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Therefore, bring all the tithes in the storehouse. Doesn't say send. Hint, hint. I love you. It doesn't say send ye the tithe in the storehouse. It says bring. That implies gathering. That there may be food in my house. How many appreciate that the word is preached in this church? If you appreciate that the word, that we preach the uncompromised word in this church, in the middle of a generation giving you, you know, smoke and mirrors and fluff and whipped cream and all the, all the nice pleasantries, but, but not the word, the riches of the word. If you appreciate that, then understand the way you get the food in the house is tithes and offerings. And the tithe is the first 10% of all your increase. It is holy to God. God owns it. It is set aside unto God as the first fruits of all your labor. It is sacred. In our generation, we don't understand the word sacred anymore. There's nothing sacred. We have barbecued so much sacred cow, all we have left is Pastor Chris's barbecue rib recipe. And I am pro barbecue rib. And by the way, when I read to you the scripture about napping and days off, I am pro nap and pro days off. It's talking about you just you just go to sleep and you just leave your spiritual life to que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. And look around the room and have three people know Doris Day. Anyway, I'm 
<sighs> if you work 40 hours a week, the first four this week, when you tithe, the first four hours is for God, not you. That's all the tithe is. And God says you'll be free from the economic curse and under the covering of his blessing if you'll walk in that obedience. We talk a lot about what, we do, what we're doing with the money. That's important. I love that we're celebrating all the good things Heart Smile is doing, all the things we're doing around the world, the mission, all, it's awesome. But let's never forget the key reason we're giving is because God said to. The first key is because it's, it's not about your feelings, it's about obedience. Amen? 100% of your income minus 0% for God equals 80% purchasing power, a wise man once told me. If you're living on less than what your money is supposed to do, you may be under a curse. You may not be participating in God's covenant. But 100% of your income minus 10% for God set aside, given to him first fruits, equals 110% purchasing power. Which would you rather have in your finances? 110% purchasing power or 80% purchasing power? And that principle works even with inflation. We need God. Father, I ask you to bless every gift and every giver. Turn that light of rhema on in our hearts again about our giving, our tithes and offerings. Let this church arise. Let us bring you glory in the finishing of this building. Let us bring you glory as we celebrate your birthday at Christmas. Let us bring you glory as we, as we come into the end of another year, as we celebrate Thanksgiving. Let us bring you glory. Let us bring you glory by meeting us at our point of faith and growing it, Father. Let us see our lives as a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. So let faith rise up, oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. Simple prayer. So let faith rise up, oh heart, believe. Let faith rise up in me. We have a few announcements. Our ushers are, are finishing out there. But uh, first one is Now Youth uh, is going to have a pie and prayer night. That's going to be this coming Sunday evening. Not tonight, this coming Sunday evening at 5 p.m. So I have that planned. And also that same night, we're going to have a special Thanksgiving prayer and communion service right here at six o'clock. So be prepared for that. It's really going to be a great time for us to all get together and just going to be some great worship time, you know, presence of God really strong. And as I said, communion time it should be very powerful. 6 p.m. next Sunday. Also, ladies, let's do lunch is going to be going Going out for lunch at La Bella's. It's right down the road. And so that's going to happen on Saturday the 19th. And so, ladies, you're going to have the whole restaurant to yourselves. The owner is opening up the restaurant just for you, just for the ladies gathering together. So it's going to be great. But we want, we need you to sign up. Sign-ups are in the back right here at this table. Please go see them and find out the details. One last reminder. Remember what Pastor Lindsay said about choir. So, men, ladies, make sure that you see the team right outside. They're ready to help you. Angel, you're going to be one of them. Yes. So just make sure you see them and sign up. All right. Be blessed. Go ahead and stand up. Give somebody a high five right beside. It's just going to be a great week. Thanks for joining us at Now Church. For the latest updates, visit us at nowchurch.com, including live or on-demand video, event registration, online giving, and much more. And don't forget to follow Now Church on our social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please use the hashtag NowChurch. Thank you.